Hello everyone, Medic Level Up here, we're back again with another video, and today's video is going to be about left anterior and posterior fascicular blocks. These blocks don't tend to cause a massive increase in the duration of the QRS complex, and instead they cause a shift in the axis of the heart. These are basically the two subdivisions of a left bundle branch. So we're going to start off by drawing the heart, we're going to draw off a AV node, a bundle of his. The left anterior fascicle is like this, and the left posterior fascicle is like this. You can see that the left anterior fascicle is depolarizing the left side, and the posterior fascicle the right side. We're just going to label these as the anterior fascicle, the posterior fascicle, and the right bundle branch. We can see that the anterior fascicle is supplying the left side of the heart, and we're just going to block this. So what tends to happen is that when the left side of the heart is not depolarizing, the right side of the heart and the posterior fascicle is responsible for throwing off the current into the left ventricle. That will cause a massive shift of the axis into a leftward direction and it's going to be more negative than 45 degrees. As a result, you will see predominantly negative QRS complexes in the inferior leads 2, 3 and AVF. So remember, not a long QRS, but a shift in axis. Similarly, let's block the posterior fascicle. You can see that there is no current flowing into the rightward side of the heart, so the anterior fascicle is now responsible for depolarizing the right side of the heart. And as a result, you get right axis deviation and an axis more positive than 120 degrees. You will see predominantly negative complexes in lead 1 and lead AVL, and positive complexes in inferior leads, which signifies right axis deviation. Before diagnosing left posterior fascicular block, make sure that you exclude all of the other causes of right axis deviation such as right ventricular hypertrophy or right ventricular strain caused by a PE. Now let's talk about bifascicular and trifascicular blocks. Bifascicular blocks is when there is blockage in two different places of the heart. Most commonly, this is going to be one in the right bundle branch and second in the left anterior fascicle. So we're going to draw it off like here. We're going to block the left anterior fascicle and the right bundle just like that. Now as a result of this, since the right bundle is blocked, you will get a right bundle branch block morphology in V1 and V6, which we have already discussed. So V1 and V6 is going to look like this. But as a result of the left anterior hemiblock, you will get a leftward axis deviation because a larger chunk of the myocardium is supplied by the left anterior hemiblock. So combining a right bundle branch block morphology with a left axis deviation, you can diagnose a biophysicular block. The last thing today is a triphysicular block. There is a common misconception that if there is a right bundle branch block morphology, a left axis deviation, and a prolonged PR interval signifying an AV block, this is known as trifascicular block, but that's not actually the case. Trifascicular block is when you are able to prove that there is alternating right and left bundle branch block morphologies. This could be dramatic in the case of a beat to beat variation of left bundle and right bundle branch block morphologies, or it could be that two ECGs are taken 30 minutes apart and one of them shows the left bundle branch block and the other one shows a right bundle branch block. In either case, the patient will need pacing. So essentially, let's review this. You've got a left anterior fascicle block and you've got a left posterior fascicle block. What's going to happen to the QRS? and what's going to happen to the axis of the heart. So in both cases, the QRS duration is going to be 0.10 to 0.12 seconds, which is going to be two small boxes. The left anterior fascicle will cause a leftward axis deviation, predominantly negative inferior leads and positive lateral leads. The left posterior fascicle will cause right axis deviation. Additional things to remember is 
when you're diagnosing a left posterior fascicle block, rule out all the other causes of right axis deviation. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. As always, feedback and questions are appreciated, and have a good day.